Welcome everyone um, to Music for Celeste. Who is Celeste? Celeste is my sister. Um, Celeste is also sister to uh, Louise and our brother Matthew, and of course daughter to um, Marlene and Darby Quinn. And um, sadly and tragically she passed away on the 8th of February 2004. That's the only sad thing about today. That's, uh, that's the facts. And um, today is a celebration of lots of things. Um, Celeste uh, was the most fabulous musician and her passion was the violin and she played it like an angel. She, um, you know, I can just visualize her now when she was uh, playing in any sort of performance. She would feel the music, the music would live through her. Um, I can see her long hair flowing and, you know, the curls and whether it was bright red or bright pink or brown, you know, whatever colour it was that particular time, you know, she was, she lived the music and um, this was her passion. And um, Celeste touched the lives of so many people through her music. And one of the people that she uh, touched is um, Adam, Adam Edwards. Uh, she was the musical, or well, the conductor for the Derwent Symphony Orchestra and um, Adam Edwards was in that orchestra and they had a special sort of connection through the music that uh, they played. And um, I had uh, the pleasure to meet Adam, who's a parent um, of children that go to the same school as our children. And um, we met and we talked about Celeste and uh, the impact that she had had upon him and, you know, her music. And Adam is a violin maker, um, and he makes the most beautiful violins and um, hardanger fiddles. And he's made this one beautiful instrument, and it's made out of all Tasmanian woods, and he's going to talk about that process and um, the passion that he's put into this particular instrument that we're here to hear today, here, here to listen to today. And, uh, he asked our family if he could call this uh, beautiful instrument, it's a six-stringed violin called a hardanger, if he could call it Celeste. And of course, that was just a beautiful thing to embody his love of the making of these uh, fine pieces, uh, these instruments, and of course, Celeste's passion of music. So the two things are combined today. And we're so lucky today because we have Jenny Thomas, who is the most fabulous performer, and I can't wait. I haven't heard, I've seen the beautiful instrument, and um, Jenny's got it here today, and she's gonna play this beautiful instrument called Celeste for us today. So it's a celebration of all sorts of things. Celeste the hardanger, Celeste the person, and um, it's just gonna be a wonderful concert. So thank you to Edward for making Celeste, thank you to Jenny for playing Celeste, and thank you to Celeste for inspiring us all. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, this instrument is a Norwegian hardanger fiddle, so um, Scandinavian music is, um, Norwegian music is what it's uh, usually played. Usually what's played upon it, and that first, that song that I just saw, played is called a listening song, so you did very well with that. Well done. <laughs> and it's from Norway. Uh, I thought what I would do today is um, play on the hardanger fiddle um, music which is that the hardanger would usually be associated with, but also music associated with it. So the next piece I'm going to um, move from a few different types of genres, or you could think of it as musical countries. And so I'm going to start with um, an Indian classical raga, because in Scandinavian music or Norwegian music there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of what, what we call quarter tones, which is notes in between the notes that we're used to hearing. And Indian music also has uh, that. So there's a, um, a lot of Scandinavian music, uh, Scandinavian musicians will um, be influenced by Indian music. And then um, we'll move to a, a Norwegian uh, song. It's actually not a song, it's a dance, and it's called a halig. Now, I don't know if there's ever been any dancing in this cathedral before, but a halig is a dance for a solo man. So there's quite some spot up. Actually, speaking of which, there's, if there are children that can't see, they're very welcome to come down and sit right here. There's a lot of space, so it'd be, you know... Come on up if you want to come and see, because then you can see there's, this is a Tasmanian tiger right at the top here, and you might get to see him a little closer. Um, so any time, children can come up. But not the adults, you've got to stay where you are. Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll move from the halig, which is a solo dance for a man, just, I'll leave that with you, to a, a springer, which is another Norwegian, another Norwegian song. Um, and, uh, oh no, I missed a bit, in between, from the Indian, how we're going to get from the Indian to the Norwegian song is with an Irish fiddle tune called uh, The Freeze Britches. Now, I've actually got no idea what that means, but freeze as in F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, and breeches as in your pants, so. <laughs> um, so that's an Irish, an Irish tune, and uh, the Scandinavians and the Irish did a lot of... Um, that they traded and there was a lot of cross-cultural movement so you can hear a lot of similarities in the music. So with, this, with the start of this song, it's, a, um, it's an improvisation on an Indian raga. So uh, when you start a raga, which basically means a set of notes, like a scale in Western music, when you start that, it's um, uh, for the musician who's improvising, who's making it up as they go along, it's quite a nice thing to imagine if, if um, before I start, I imagine the note that I might like to hear first, and you imagine the note that you would like to hear come from this instrument, and we'll see if they match. And from there, you explore all the notes in the raga um, and their relationship to each other.
Um, I'm going to reach in the Harding fiddle um, whilst Adam, here this is Adam, and he is going to explain a little bit about just what this crazy violin is all about. <laughs> so I'm going to reach in it to a different, a different tuning, and for those people that are interested, um, uh, I'm tuning it now to B, B, F sharp, B and D sharp, the top string. B, F sharp, B and D sharp, the top strings. And the bottom strings are C sharp, E, D. Huh? Can you remember what the bottom ones are? Uh, not C sharp, E, F sharp, G hmm. sharp and D. There's actually 25 different tunings for the hard fiddle and depending which region you're in, they all vary. So um, my only conclusion is there must be long winters in Norway to come up with all of that. Um, but 80% of them of the tunes in Norway are, are on one tuning, which is something at least. Um, uh, so the Hardanger fiddle dates back to the mid 1600s, and by the mid 1700s, it had actually become Norway's national folk instrument, and still is today. Uh, very famous for their Hardanger fiddles and also for their Hardanger cross stitch. Um, Typically, harangas are um, played at folk dances, and uh, the two main dances are a springer, which you would have heard just then, one of them, which is a fast dance, and the other one's a ganga, which is a, a slow dance. Uh, and another tradition in Norway is for one hardanga fiddle to precede um, a wedding procession into the church. Um, so the characteristics uh, of a haranga fiddle compared to a violin um, is what I'd like to go through now. This outline that I've used for this instrument is of a Stradivari 1715, which is his golden period of instrument making. And uh, early on they were a little bit more e medieval shaped and then sort of by the 1800s they were getting into um, pretty much a modern violin outline uh, and all the modern makers in Norway now are using either a Stradivari or a Guarneri pattern as a place to start for their outline. Um, so the biggest uh, change is of course the extra strings which come in the form of the understrings which are very uh, thin wire which you can hear now uh, running underneath uh, in a tunnel underneath the fingerboard and uh, they ring sympathetically um, with the top strings. Uh, and what that means is when a frequency on the top string matches the frequency underneath, the energy transfers and the sympathetic understring will, will ring. And that's creating another dimension to the, to the sound. Um, the sound holes are also cut differently. A, a normal violin will have the holes on the top of the belly and you can look in and see the back of the instrument whereas on a hardanger fiddle they're cut so the holes on the side so if you look down in theory you can't see the back because there is an opening on the side like this and what that does is it radiates the sound outwards sideways rather than in a violin which would be radiating the sound upwards um, and all these things start to um, bring on the character of the instrument because you know, essentially we are still working with a, with a, a Stradivari shape. So we're getting further and further away of, from a, a classical Italian instrument. Uh, the next change is to have a shorter neck. Uh, and what this does is um, changes, most importantly, changes the string length. And the string length is approximately 30 mils shorter than a standard violin. Uh, the wood is also uh, carved a lot thinner uh, and that helps in the resonance. Um, to get um, all the understrings and everything working, um, you really do need quite a large full top and um, if it was normal thicknessing, it would uh, inhibit the sound and the ringing of the instrument. So typically everything's thinned out quite, quite a considerably um, more and then uh, traditionally they would carve a dragon's head because they've got long winters in Norway um, and that's very typical to see a dragon's head on a hardanger fiddle or uh, maybe sometimes a lion's head um, and of course the tuning 
is, is higher, much higher, uh, it's to get that nice icy sound coming through. Um, the lower string uh, compared to a violin is two tones higher and every uh, other string is, is, is a tone higher. And they are highly decorated. Um, if you're looking at any of the photos, traditional photos, um, they've got a lot of ink work over pretty much all the surfaces. The fingerboards um, have bone inlay all the way down them, um, highly like 300 pieces of bone. Uh, it's an extraordinary amount of work goes into them. Um, which brings me to talk about this particular Hara fiddle, which is inspired by the traditional ones. So um, I was looking for um, decorative Tasmanian timbers, which we've got quite a lot of, um, to use. And for this instrument, I have used King Billy for the soundboard, uh, Saphis Frass for the sides and for the neck and the devil's head, and Huon Pine for the linings and she oak for the fingerboard tailpiece and chin rest. And another um, not quite so well-known timber called horizontal scrub uh, for the bridge. And the devil's head, I put bone teeth in and uh, black diamonds for the eyes. And uh, as Alison explained before, we met up at a uh, a school dinner one night, the night before I was to glue the lid on and as it worked out um, I made a phone call and asked the Quinn family if I could call this instrument Celeste and here we are. Thank you. fiddle player called Quivin O'Rallaha and um, I met him at a festival in New South Wales and I don't know if any of you have been to a folk festival before where they have something called a fiddle round robin which is basically a whole bunch of fiddle players up on stage playing very fast <laughs> fiddle tunes trying to play faster than the others and talking about everything to do with violins and some of them are a, a nice reasonable length about an hour an hour and a half, but this particular one went for two and a half hours, and it was programmed for two and a half hours. And um, so I was sitting next to this violin player called Quivine, and um, he'd just been doing a lot of touring, a lot of festivals, and he'd played at a lot of these fiddle round robins. And he was beyond any kind of polite facade of seeming interested in what everybody else was playing. And, and he, he was... Um, he was quite, quite an interesting fellow and he'd come across from Ireland to Australia with one pair of shoes and that was a pair of bright green crocs and that's what he was wearing at the time. And so he, he, um, he amused himself through the two and a half hours of fiddle round robins of other fiddle players playing, most of whom were his bandmates because he was in a band of four fiddle players. Um, he amused himself by um, flinging his croc up into the air and catching it again on his foot. <laughs> <laughs> constantly. So I thought this is someone who I obviously have to meet and talk to. And um, subsequently we became friends and, uh, and then uh, I learnt this tune. And it's, um, he actually plays the Hardanger fiddle as well. And so he wrote this for Hardanger fiddle. And from that I'm going to go into a song. And it's an American, traditional American song. And a lot of, um, a lot of Irish people or um, Scottish people or English will say, oh yes, American music. That all came from Ireland, you know, but the Scandinavians will tell you that actually, actually it comes from Scandinavia. And I think you can, you can very much hear an old time American fiddle playing. You can hear the Scandinavian influence quite clearly. It'll have different tunings. And uh, so I'll play an uh, old time song called Wedding Dress. And it's about a woman and she, um, she's sewing her wedding dress. And she's taken quite a long time in, in the sewing of the wedding dress. And, and she, she keeps answering the question, um, is your wedding dress made? Is it ready yet? Well, I'm just doing the green thread, I'm just doing the red thread. And it ends at the end with a, um, a question of she wouldn't, um, is, is the wedding dress yet, ready yet? And she says, well, she wouldn't say yes and she wouldn't say no if it was ready yet. So perhaps she was stalling for a reason. <laughs>
years Better be making your wedding dress Your wedding dress, wedding dress You better be making your wedding dress Well, it's already made, trimmed in green Prettiest dress that you've ever seen You've ever seen, ever seen The prettiest dress that you've ever Don't you guess? Better be making your wedding dress, your wedding dress, wedding dress. You better be making your wedding dress. Well, it's already made, trimmed in red, stitched all round with the golden thread, golden thread, golden. Stitched around with a golden thread. Well, my little only love, don't you? Better be making your wedding dress, your wedding dress, wedding dress. You better be making your wedding dress. Well, it's already made, trimmed in white. We're gonna get married on Saturday night, on Saturday night, Saturday night. Gonna get married on Saturday She wouldn't say no All she'd do is just sit and sew Sit and sew, sit and sew All she'd do is just sit and sew Thank you. I'd like to welcome to the stage um, playing double bass and singing is Dan Wicker. You can give him a round of applause if you like. Dan is one of the stars of Mona Foma. <laughs> you might have seen him in the Barefoot Orchestra. Has anyone here been to any of the Mona concerts? There's some nods. <laughs> but he was playing tuba. I decided not to have the tuba and the hard day today. Um, I could do it in here, actually.
So I read Tuning for a piece. Um, the very first piece I played was called A Listening Song from Norway. And I'm going to do another listening song now. But this one, um, each listening song has many different parts, say about eight parts. And you go from one to the other and then you go back to the start again and you do it again and again. But um, instead of following the usual form of playing each part twice, I'm going to play each part for a length of time and looping each part to, to let the bass have time to explore all the different harmonic possibilities. And with the idea of um, um, to help myself and uh, to, the idea of losing time, I think.
idea that Scandinavian music traveled to America, Dan's going to sing a song now, and um, it's an American song.
crew are at rest I'm singing this song to the one Thank you, thank you. That was a, a traditional Australian song called Little Fish. And for our, our last piece today, I'm going to do one more Australian song. And before I introduce that, I'd like to say thank you very much for being a very, very beautiful and warm audience. It's been a delight to play for you. And um, I'd also like to thank Adam Edwards for organising the concert. And um, another round of applause for Dan Whitney, who's a company. <laughs> So here's another Australian song for you. Um, since it is a very Australian looking mm. instrument, mm. despite its um, uh, exotic um, foundation. Um, and you, you might know this song, so you can sing along if you want.
Would you please thank Jenny M. Thomas and Dan Whitten. Would you also please thank on sound Andrew Quinn? And, and thank you for coming this afternoon to remember Celeste. Um, up the back, uh, I have a display of some tools of the trade for anyone that would like to have a look, and also some CDs of Jenny's if you'd like to buy something. Thank you.